So what is placenta previa? The implantation of the placenta. Where is the normal implantation? It will be most of the times it will be in the fundus, fundal region. Either it can be anterior or posterior or whatever may be. But if it is seen near the vicinity of the cervical os, okay, we call it as a placenta previa. I already told you, if it is a painless bleeding, what is it? Painful bleeding. So, the placenta previa, the picture is always, the patient presents with severe bleeding. The leg will be like complete, the gorent of the the patient will present with such a severe bleeding. Enter the bleeding will be from the genital area to the leg, entire total leg will be dipped in the blood. So, sudden severe bleeding which is very painless, okay. But always remember it is painless bleeding and very severe bleeding when compared with abruption. So, uh, what is placenta akrita? What is akrita? What is inkrita? What is parkrita? You will know placenta previa. Other than that, what is placenta akrita, inkrita, parkrita? Hmm? Akrita is into means it got implanted. Then what is inkrita? Superficially, yeah, correct. Hmm. Then what is incrita? Then what is parkrita? Correct, you are right, exactly correct. Continue. What is parkrita? That's it. Very exactly correct. So, yeah, remember, akrita is for adhesion. Incrita is for I. I for I, invasion. A for A, adhesion. P is for perforation. So, what is there? So, it is adhered. If it is adhered, it is placenta akrita. Okay. The placenta will not, normally is it adhered? Normally, it will not be adhered. So, once the baby is out, automatically the placenta will come out. But if it is adhered placenta, the placenta will not come out. So, that is placenta akrita. It is invading into the myometrium. Invasion. That is placenta incrita. Not only invading, it will be seen outside the uterine cavity, perforating the uterine cavity, uterus totally, serosa. So, that is parkrita. So, they have asked you, akrita, inkrita, parakrita. Just remember, so simple. A is for adhesion, I is for invasion, P is for perforation. Okay, akrita, inkrita, parakrita. Yeah. Akrita, why there is akrita is because normally decidual plate will be formed and that will be separating. Whereas in a crate of akrita, this plate will not be there. So, that is why it is directly adhered to the uterus. So, there are gradings. That's what I told you. What is the grading called as? For abruptio? The classification is not the McAfee. Okay? The classification of placenta previa is not McAfee. We do an expectant management in placenta previa. So, the classification of abruptio is? Page. McAfee is a regimen. What do we do is? In case placenta previa cases, we don't do immediate delivery. We go for expectant management. That management regimen is called as McAfee regimen. Okay. So, coming to classification, there is no name. Whereas, Abrupshaw has a name. That is page classification. How many grades are there? Abrupshaw, Abrupshaw. What are all that? What is three? Two? Two if fetal compromise is there or not. Distress is there or not. One. But. Patient presence with symptoms. Zero. No symptoms. But why you are calling abruption? Clot after delivery. No symptoms. Totally normal. But clot after delivery. So coming to placenta previa. The same we have got various grades. But depending upon the position of the placenta. So, the way the placental position is, we are dividing into different grades. So, grade 4, grade, they have asked you these grades. Grade 4, grade 3, grade 2, grade 1. So, what is grade 4? Grade 4, always remember the placenta is covering totally the internal loss. So, this is the placenta, this is the cervix. The placenta will be sitting like this. Okay? This is the os. This is the os part. The placenta is sitting like this. Totally it has covered the os. This is Grade 4, which is very dangerous. There are, grade 4 and grade 3 are always dangerous because the total placenta is down. 
so the once the os dilates what you are able to feel is the placenta so the placenta gets separated and severe bleeding is seen so grade 4 is dangerous coming to grade 3 what is grade 3 this is the this partially covers the os not fully okay this is grade 3 so grade 3 is also dangerous because whenever you are palpating you are palpating the placenta not the fetus so the chances of separation is very high once the patient goes into labor so the partially covering the internal loss but not totally that is grade 3 what is grade 2 one edge of the placenta extends to the suppose this is so the placenta will be like this it is reaching the os that is grade 2 low lying placenta low lying placenta is the placenta is seen here but not reaching the level of the os but it is within 2 cm that's what we discussed in previous class okay if it is about 2 cm it is not low lying if it is within the reach of 2 cm low lying placenta but it is not approaching the os there is some gap from here to here but it is low lying 1 cm difference is there we call it as low lying placenta whereas here it is approaching the os region whereas here it is partially covering here as it totally covering 1 2 1 2 3 and 4 okay so that is the grading see here you can see typically so is my four placenta the fourth picture you can see so this is the placenta it is totally covering the os like this symmetrical distribution of the placenta this is the total placenta this is the umbilical cord this is the uterus half section of the uterus is it clear how the grade four placenta previa is the same picture this is nothing but the placenta this is the total is the placenta sitting here this is the umbilical cord this is the uterus this is the cervix and here it is at uh, uh, invasion you can see some part uh, it is directly going and sitting into the myometer but we can confirm it only through either through direct or go for histopathological okay so it is invading it is going into the myometer this is increta this i have already discussed okay you know what is accreta increta and percreta types of placenta this is the low implant this is, is this are all the grades what we have seen this is the total placenta it is totally completely covering it is grade 4 it is grade 3 it is up, covering the os but not completely grade 3 here grade uh, it has just approached the low os it is grade 2 grade 1 is missing okay okay we'll go to bits quiz hmm you don't want quiz you want me to finish quiz is very important because uh, you don't want quiz eh? it you get bored if i teach continuously or not getting bored enjoying my class you want quiz or not tell me quiz uh, class uh. quiz how many of you are for quiz lift up Okay, how many of you for class lift up? Only three hands, four hands, five hands for class. So rest are for quiz. Tell me, no, whatever you want, I will go. It's not my choice. Either I can finish or I am ready for to teach pleasant up previa. So how many of you want class lift up? Lift I, I can't see low hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I feel the majority goes for quiz because only nine hands are up for class. ha ha what tell me quiz are fast she want me to finish no time only 20 minutes left out nine hands are only for class so i am proceeding with quiz is it okay no okay i'll finish it of the class so coming to etiology so what are all the various causes of placenta previa the abruption is different from the placenta previa so any multi parity advanced parity or advanced age so these are the two causes advanced age or advanced parity the same thing multi parity and multi fetal gestation same like abruptio placenta and any prior surgeries prior cesarean section this time the chances of placenta previa is high it can get other to that segment so any prior cesarean sections prior myomectomy is any surgeries and previous abortions so even anything which is interfering with the normal implantation continuous more dnc and all dilatation and curettage if you do more curettage any previous endometritis infection previous uterine infection so now it is preventing normal implantation of the normal placental site or previous history of placenta previa 
So once if the patient is having placenta previa, the chances once again landing are high. So if the patient is uh, abruption, is it repeating or not? Abruption is it repeating in this pregnancy? Previously the patient presented with abruption. Now can she have abruption? Yes, the previa is repeating. The abruption is repeating. Uh, the preeclampsia is repeating. Three are repeating. Okay, once previous pregnancy, if she had this complaint, this is also one of the risk factor. Okay, and uh, most commonly, what we see is low transfer cesarean in the incision. Any cesarean sections in prior cesarean sections, what we are going to do is the most and very dangerous. And I forgot to tell you, out of uh, one type three. Type 2, 1, 2, 3, whatever we have discussed for, the 3 and 4 are very dangerous. We put it under severe grade. Why? Because they are totally beneath the os. The 1 and 2, we put it under low grade. Okay, the severity is a bit low when compared with this. But type 2, once again, the placenta has got anterior and posterior. So, the type 2, even though we are putting under mild, but remember, the type 2 posterior is dangerous. Why type 2 posterior is dangerous? The type 2 posterior, it is going to, once the head, what it is going to do? The once it is going, the head is coming down, it is going to go and press the placenta. Automatically, the blood supply, once the placenta gets compressed, the blood supply to the fetus stops. So, the baby landing in IUD is very high. So, the type 2 posterior is dangerous, okay? Already we know type 3, type 4 are dangerous. Other than this, the type 2 posterior is also dangerous, okay? Yeah, Irfan, Bhakti, everyone opted for class. We are continuing the class. Clinical presentation. So, how the presentation is? Painless or painful bleeding? Yes. Is it low amount of bleeding, severe amount? Yes. Profuse painless bleeding. This is the typical presentation what we see. So, even there can be sometimes spotting. It's not every time the profuse bleeding. Even there can be sometimes spotting. But the typical presentation is painless bleeding. Always remember it is painless bleeding. And the placenta prevails here. The placenta is occupying the lower position. So, the mal positions and mal presentations are seen. The fetus cannot sit here. So, the fetus can occupy some other position. Okay. So, which of the following is not seen in placenta prevail? They can ask you. So, in a case of placenta prevail, the mal positions and mal presentations are seen. Because the lower segment is occupied by the placenta. What is this stalwart sign without seeing? Compression of the? What is compressing? What is compressing? What? You are correct but half correct. Hmm? So, the stalwart is sign is because the placenta is lower part in placenta previa, once the head compressing, what it is going to do? It is compressing the placenta. So, when the head is coming down, it is going to compress the placenta during the contraction. So, or whatever, once you press the head down also, it is going to compress the placenta and it is going to cause fetal bradycardia. But once you release that compression, automatically the compression is released and fetal heart rate will come back to normal. That is called as stalwart sign. It is a clinical sign. How we demonstrate to how to diagnose it is one of the feature of placenta previa. So, it is one of the sign of placenta previa. Is it clear? So, once you push the head down, if the placenta is there, it is going to compress that placenta. Once the placenta is compressed, bradycardia. So, once you remove your hand, what it is going to happen? The head is come back to its normal position. So, the compression on the placenta is relieved. So, once again the fetal heart rate will be normal. That is stalwart this sign. So, this is the cervix. Exactly, very good picture. This is the cervix. These are all the membranes. So, the fetus is inside the membrane. But anteriorly you are able to see the placenta. Okay. Which grade, grade this? How can you say it is grade 2? It grade 2. <laughs> anterior and posterior are seen not only in grade 2. Okay, they are seen either in grade 1 or what did I tell you was grade 2 posterior is dangerous. All other grades have anterior and posterior. Okay. Yeah, now tell me. Either it can be 3 or 4. Okay. Grade 2, what did we say? It is covering some part of the os, but not the total os. If it is grade 4, the membrane should not be seen. The membranes are seen. So, it is not grade 4, approximately grade 3, just, okay. Here, this is the ultrasound picture we can see. This is the cervix. I will show you the outline of the cervix. This is the cervix. Are you able to see? This is the outline of the cervix. Sorry, yeah, uh, this is the total uterus. This is the total uterus, antiverted uterus. This is 
and this is the placenta so it is coming but we need to measure uh, sorry not this is the cervix this is the cervix this is the uterus this is the cervix this part only this part is the cervix so from internal loss we are measuring from how far the placenta low lying lower part of the placenta if it is more than 2 cm then we don't call it as placenta previa if it is within 2 cm we grade it so tell me now suppose it is 1 cm which grade it is grade 1 low lying placenta so how to diagnose nothing no other thing for diagnosis of placenta previa to diagnose a placenta previa never do a pervaginal examination once the patient comes with bleeding pv before going for pervaginal examination we be very careful so in case of placenta previa suppose it can be 4 or 3 if you put your fingers and try to palpate what is that mean time you will separate the placenta okay it will cause very profuse bleeding severe bleeding iud and patient in shock so always once a patient comes with bleeding before going for pervaginal examination be careful and you can go for trans abdominal scan okay and mri coming to mri when it is uh, you want to know it clearly but nowadays we are not going for mri even within trans vaginal scan we can clearly see the position and all okay so that's what i told you so placenta previa don't do it eh? at always do it in a double setup examination whenever you want to examine a patient with placenta previa where where else we use double setup double setup examination hmm what is double setup examination double setup examination is is a room where you can do immediate surgery so you suppose you want to do a pervaginal examination you have separated the placenta you thought it is a membranes so you have separated the placenta the patient started bleeding profusely now what you will do you will do or immediately cesarean section okay that is a double setup where you can do cesarean section and examination and cesarean section at the same time so double setup examination so even before going for pervaginal examination first to do speculum examination if the patient complains of bleeding the first thing you need to do if the patient comes with bleeding is put speculum from where the bleeding is coming in previous thing we have seen the, the speculum we have clearly seen the placenta is there lower membranes is there so put a speculum go for a speculum examination next this is the question for your next class that's why i didn't tell you cpd why for double setup double setup means where we have to go immediately for cesarean section where do we do immediately both the examination and the cesarean section should be done at the same time the setup which contains where we can go for immediate delivery other than placenta previa next class answer for you next class question answer okay and very important thing is in a case of placenta previa recently i got a case a patient with she was around 26 to 28 weeks two prior cesarean sections with an anomalous baby so she was sent to me from esa hospital she was referred to me recently from esa hospital so she was two prior cesarean sections and once i examined she came with bleeding mild spotting once i examined it the total placenta is something like a type 3 eclampsia na what what double setup think about to oh you are still thinking about double setup that is for homework now come to class i have to repeat my question once again so a patient with two prior cesarean sections anomalous baby she was referred from esi iud with anomalous baby two prior cesarean section once i have done a scan the placenta is like this grade 3 anterior the placenta is sitting anterior and it is grade 3 so the very very important point what i should do in this is while doing an ultrasound scan be careful to exclude accreta increta percreta okay if you don't want to exclude suppose it is a 26 weeks that patient was around something 26 weeks now i can't do a cesarean section for that patient already it is two prior sections now i want to terminate vaginally i have given what type of induction two prior sections which induction we can go 26 weeks termination two prior cesarean sections now i don't want to if we do surgery on that patient what is the name of that surgery called as hysterotomy what is hysterotomy the same like cesarean section the same nothing different from cesarean section the same cesarean section if we do it less than 28 weeks we call it 
hysterectomy if you do it more than 28 weeks we call it a cesarean section what is hysterectomy ectomy is removal ortomy means opening of the uterus okay but i don't want to do any surgery on this patient so now i but i want the fetus is out two prior sections what injection you can give extra amniotic instillation of itacredin lactate that is the best option in a case of iud with two prior sections okay so now before i want to put an itacredin lactate i want to confirm why because if i put her on itacredin lactate once the patient goes into labor the baby will be out the placenta will not come out if it is accreta increta or percreta it is a very dangerous because two prior sections the placenta is sitting anteriorly it is totally adhered to the scar so any case with prior section with anterior placenta previa always try to exclude this aips okay by doing a doppler we can exclude this so once you exclude this then go for happily so that night around 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock i got a call madam the fetus is out but the placenta has not yet come Th that's what i got a call already have done luckily i have done a scan and they show, it was the report was shown that it is totally a normal placenta i mean anterior placenta but no accreta increta and percreta i was very happy because it no accreta increta percreta so i thought everything will be fine but around night 2 o'clock i got a call the fetus is out but placenta is not coming i told them wait for 30 minutes then see 30 minutes finished madam go for further management oxytocin whatever methadone i told them they gave everything but still the placenta is not out madam i have to rush to the hospital at around 9 or 2 o'clock night so i went to the hospital but it is nothing such a simple thing the placenta is already out but it is in the vagina the doctor was not able to make out that it is in the vagina that's it so simple thing okay so that's how it is important i was suspecting accreta increta percreta but before chance i did a doppler scan and i made it clear it is not accreta increta percreta if i would not have done a doppler scan at that time now i have to rush because it can be accreta percreta the accreta percreta you can't remove the placenta you can't give the incision and remove the patient may land in emergency hysterectomy i may have to do a hysterectomy night around 2 o'clock but i was very confident that there was not no aips in that patient so the luckily the placenta is out is it clear why a doppler is very important in a case of placenta previa so any placenta previa the doppler is very important and uh, even in this patients there this was asked afp elevated levels not only in anomalous babies even here we can see if the ms afp levels are elevated it indicates the patient can land in bleeding okay second or third trimester bleeding this was asked M elevated afp levels is seen in which condition so it indicates one of that uh, bleeding so complications you know any bleeding shock automatically patient can have mal presentations or not definitely there can be preterm labor in placenta previa the corpus of pph sometimes the placenta that's what i told you what happens the baby is out the placenta is inside return placenta anything because the placenta is adhered inside fetal complications so placenta previa whenever the uterine patient gets contractions she can land in preterm labor low birth weight babies why because iugr babies i already told you when the placenta is in the lower part the blood supply to the fetus is not as good as placenta in the fundus so so the patient can baby can land in low birth weight once the bleeding starts the patient land in asphyxia the baby iud and even congenital malformations are also seen okay this was asked what are all the fetal and maternal complications of placenta previa management so in a case of placenta previa most of the times most most of the times placenta previa no normal delivery why in placenta the placenta is down if you allow normal delivery the while head is coming it is going to compress the fetus so iud can occur or else if the total grade 3 go grade 4 no chance even no don't give a trial because the placenta is down even before the baby is out the placenta is out what will happen if the placenta is out the blood supply to the fetus is stopped immediately so the iud so in a case of placenta previa it is most of the times it is cesarean delivery okay only low lying this is the one case but not only not nowadays we are not giving even trial in a case of low lying placenta if it is above 2 cm then we can give a trial better to go for a cesarean delivery in a case of placenta previa okay what is vasa previa two other conditions where we can see the antepartum hemorrhage one is vasa previa other thing is velamentous cord insertion so that will discuss so uh, this was asked for you so what how do you manage a case of placenta previa 
if the bleeding is very mild suppose the loss of bleeding is less than 50% there is minimal amount of the bleeding how do you grade the bleeding what is mild moderate severe percent is mild moderate 15 to exactly correct 15 to 30 percent is moderate severe is so mild if the blood loss is less than 15 percent we call it as mild bleeding so how to know whether it is mild severe or not in the case of mild bleeding the vital signs are normal the urine output the kidneys are maintained normal what should be the normal minimum urine output per hour 30 ml i told you all urea classification less than 30 ml so the minimal urine output minimal should be 30 ml per hour so if it is maintained the vital signs are normal so if it is greater than 36 weeks it has reached term but the bleeding is minimal even though it is minimal but it has reached term so don't wait go for cesarean section suppose it is 28 weeks but placenta previa something like grade 1 or 2 but with minimal bleeding now what i'll do i'll do an expectant management that regimen is called as mckefy regimen so moderate bleeding so when to call moderate bleeding 15 to 30 percent uh, how can i say the patient has the having 15 to 30 percent of the bleeding the pulse rate will increase by 20, 10 to 20 beats the bp will increase by sorry fall down it is not increasing the bp will fall down by 10 mm of mercury hypotension will be seen urine output may or may not be affected okay but the pulse rate and bp are affected so in such a patient if it is greater than 30 weeks any case greater than 36 weeks first go for cesarean section so if it is less than 36 weeks in mild bleeding mckefy regimen if it is less than 36 weeks and if the patient is stable because in moderate bleeding the patient may or may not be stable if the patient is continuously stable then only go for expectant management that is mckefy regimen if the patient is unstable moderate bleeding sometimes the pulse rate is going high still the bleeding is continuing the bp is falling down in such a patient immediately what you need to do is if it is not a severe bleeding in a severe bleeding i may have to terminate but in a case of moderate patient came with moderate bleeding so in a such a case i can go for intense immediate blood transfusion i can stop the uterus contracting so by giving tocolytics and you steroids for the maturity if the still is i mean if the uterus has stopped contraction and if the bleeding has stopped i can continue the pregnancy or else if the uterus is contracting continuously or if the bleeding is even after giving this treatment if the patient is having continuous bleeding then i have to go for termination okay is it clear so they don't ask you direct questions they are, they give you this picture so a patient presented with painless vaginal bleeding her pulse rate is around 120 140 beats per minute the blood pressure is 90 by 40 blood pressure or something like 100 so 90 by 50 something the blood pressure reading and urine output is normal a patient with 32 weeks how we are going to manage how we are going to manage 32 weeks నేన్ చెప్పాను నేను మీకు రీడింగ్స్ పల్స్ రేట్ ఎంత ఉంది హౌ టు నో స్టేబుల్ ఆర్ అన్స్టేబుల్ ద సేమ్ రీడింగ్స్ ఆర్ కంటిన్యూయింగ్ వన్స్ అగైన్ ఆర్ ద ఇన్ కండిషన్ ఇస్ ఇంప్రూవింగ్ దెన్ వీ కెన్ కాల్ ఇట్ ఎస్ ఎ స్టేబుల్ పేషెంట్ స్టిల్ ద లెవెల్స్ ఆర్ డిక్రీజింగ్ ద వాట్ ఆర్ ద పల్స్ రేట్ ఇస్ ఇంక్రీజింగ్ అండ్ బ్లడ్ ప్రెషర్ ఇస్ డిక్రీజింగ్ దెన్ అన్స్టేబుల్ పేషెంట్ ఓకే ఇన్ సచ్ కేసెస్ యూ హావ్ టు ఫాలో దిస్ సో ద క్లినికల్ పిక్చర్ దే విల్ గివ్ దే విల్ నెవర్ ఆస్క్ యువర్ డైరెక్ట్ క్వశ్చన్ వాట్ ఇస్ ద మేనేజ్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ప్లెసెంటా ప్రీవియా సివియర్ బ్లీడింగ్ సో సివియర్ బ్లీడింగ్ when do we call it a severe bleeding around 40% of the bleeding the patient had already 40% of blood loss and sometimes there can be very low bp readings or unrecordable bp readings patient in shock all other features will be seen oliguria anuria everything folies if you put no urine output fetal distress is seen in such a conditions so what is the treatment whether fetal distress is there or not in a severe bleeding even before going for cesarean section blood transfusion first first before land mother is very important now to us rather than the baby so even before landing in irreversible shock state we should prevent the reversible shock state give immediate blood transfusion shift her to ot to a cesarean section what is this mckefy mckefy regimen so when to do this in stable patients and preterm babies okay not in term term any placenta previa mild moderate severe go for termination okay not cesarean section go for termination most of the time cesarean section only okay so in a case of stable patients but in a preterm babies what we do we do is tocolysis first stop the contracting uterus so that further bleeding is stopped further separation of the placenta is stopped due tocolysis 
Next steroids for steroids for what? Fetus for fetal lung maturity so that at least we can stop for 24 hours. When uh, how many doses we are giving? Beta methasone. How many grams? How many hours apart? In normally we give it two doses, 12 grams, 24 hours apart. If it is a very emergency condition, we can make it 12 hours apart. Okay. So at the same time, the patient should not strain or should not undergo any stress. So give stool softeners and a high residue diet so that the patient will not strain during passing motion. Okay. So after um, next, if it is less than 36, sorry, uh, it is uh, reverse opposite. So if there is severe bleeding or dead fetus or malformed fetus. So if any features are there, don't wait. No mechanism deliver. So if it is greater than 36 weeks until 37 weeks complete, if the 37 completed weeks go for termination. If it is even before that, confirm the lung maturity. Less than sphingomyelin ratio. If it is greater than two, go for termination. Or else give steroids, then go for termination. Is it clear? What is this vasa previa? Vasa previa is nothing but the vessels. See here, these are the vessels. Sometimes these vessels will be passing at the level of the internal loss. This is very dangerous. So what we do while doing rupture of the membranes or while doing examinations, we may rupture these membranes. This is called as vasa previa this condition so there will be severe and one more thing in vasa previa the vessels means the bleeding is fetal or maternal fetal because we are damaging this fetal blood vessels so the bleeding is fetal blood loss is always fetal this was asked for you because we are directly rupturing the blood vessels of the fetus so the bleeding is fetal but not the maternal so, how to diagnose this, whether it is fetal blood or maternal blood, we do one test which was asked, app test, very frequently asked, otherwise called as Singer's test or alkali denaturation test or Lohner slot test, these are all the various names for this test. So, what we do in this test is, one point you need to remember is, whatever the fetal blood, it is resistant to alkaline pH. What test we do for fetal RBC? RH. Name, name, name. Clear Betkit test. What is the main feature of that? Fetal RBC? Or? Resistant to? What is the acid we are using? Citrate acid. Citrate acid. Phosphate buffer. So it is resistant. The fetal RBC are resistant. That is called as Clear Betkit test. Here, the fetal blood is resistant to alkaline pH, there to acid, here to alkaline. Is sensitive or resistant? To both it is resistant. That is what we call it as apt test. So, to, to detect the fetal amount of the fetal blood loss. Yes, Deepti Bhakti, it is correct. Clear her Betke test. Then what is this Willemann test? Normally, whatever the fetal vessels are there, what they are going to happen? The fetal vessels, normally they are protected. But in a case of sometimes the placenta, what is surrounding the placenta, the membranes are there. So the fetal blood vessels can sometimes instead of getting inserted into the umbilical cord and into the placenta. Normally what is there, this is the placenta, this is the umbilical cord, these are the fetal blood vessels. Normally it will be like this. But sometimes what is going to happen, The uh, this is the uterus, the placenta is like this. The umbilical cord normally it should insert here. But totally there are membranes. But in, instead of this, some fetal blood vessels get inserted directly into the membranes. But instead of sitting onto the placenta, okay, that is called as filamentous cord incision. The incision of the cord is not at the normal placental site; it is directly into the membranes. So what will happen? Once the membranes are ruptured, automatically the blood vessels get open. They got torn. They get ruptured. So there can be severe bleeding. That is called as filamentous incision. Why this is seen is this is both are causes of antepartum hemorrhage. Okay. And it is most common in twins and triplet pregnancies because the blood supply is more, the vascularity is more. So they can insert, get inserted at any place. Nothing but they present with same picture, vaginal bleeding, severe vaginal bleeding with caesarean section. So treatment is always blood transmission then followed by immediate delivery. Okay, this we will discuss I think tomorrow, it is already 8.5.
Okay, we'll discuss this tomorrow. Any doubts in today's class?